and welcome to another edition of Nook News. Today, I am joined by Michelle Brady, the director of the Center for Active Living, and Jennifer Reed, the director of Bridgewater State University's Senior College. Wow. Boy, Michelle, haven't we really moved on from where we were to where we are? This, Beth, is our dream, and we, we brought with the help of Bridgewater State University and a wonderful partnership that we started, I think, Jen, we started last year meeting. Um, despite pandemic, that will not stop us, and uh, we are so excited to bring this to Cal and to Peru. So happy. Um, Absolutely. Um, Michelle knows that almost from the time she joined our team, my dream was always to have a lifelong learning of some kind in this building. And now, all these months and years later, it has come to fruition. Jennifer, would you like to introduce yourself and give everybody a little background of how this came about? Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Jennifer Reed. It's so great to be here today. So many people on this uh, conversation today. Welcome. Um, like uh, Beth said, I work at Bridgewater State University, and one of my main responsibilities is being the director of the senior college. And we started last fall um, with a senior college after many conversations over the course of a decade, really, in the making at the university, where our core group of stakeholders, alumni, folks in the community of Bridgewater really wanted us to offer a non-credit enrichment program for older adults. And um, it finally trickled down to my lap and I said to my boss, hey, just let me do it. And he was gracious enough to just let us create the senior college. And so we started last fall um, and we had classes at the Bridgewater Public Library because space is at a premium, obviously, um, on a college campus. It's very difficult to get space that's accessible during the day. So we partnered with our local library and it was um, uh, more of a success than we could ever have imagined. And we hope to have about 40 students our first semester and we ended up with 100. So we were blown away. There was a lot of engagement. And then we plan to offer a full semester, doubling the amount of courses for the spring. And our spring semester was due to start mid-March. And as you all know, that didn't quite pan out the way that we had hoped. And our plan in March was to expand to other communities. Uh, but due to the pandemic, we had to pivot and make a decision to go virtual. So we did that in the spring, piloted a virtual program, and now we're back um, after uh, lots of conversation with the people that have taken our classes and with our faculty and then with our new partners. So um, what we had planned to do this fall was to offer in-person classes at the Center for Active Living there in Plymouth. Um, I grew up in Plymouth. Plymouth is a really important uh, part, uh, you know, important to me personally, but also to the university itself as a, um, a place, you know, of importance for, you know, lots of our students come from Plymouth. And then we know that P Plymouth has a vibrant older adult community. And there's lots of progressive things that are done at the Center for Active Living that we really admired. And that's why we wanted to partner with Plymouth. And so that's why we're here today to talk about what we have to offer for this fall. Very, very exciting. When you went virtual in March, were people still able to participate? Like, did you have the full participation? We, we actually didn't. So as you can imagine, you know, this was unprecedented, you know, right. uh, the, you know, the last time Bridgewater uh, faced a pandemic was, you know, in 19, 18, you know, when the Spanish flu. So right. a lot of our faculty were, you know, they were hit hard by this. Their kids are now at home and they were um, looking, you know, they, their, their normal classes that they teach to our students, they were overwhelmed with having to pivot and go online. So we ended up with about a third of our classes being offered virtually via okay. Zoom. And so we didn't have the full slate because faculty, just like all of us, I think we were in that like 
crisis mode and they were like, okay, if I don't have to teach my class this semester, I'll let it go and come back to you, you know, when things are over. I think we all thought things would be over in a couple of weeks or, you know, oh, things will be back to normal by June. So um, we, you know, we downsized a bit and we only ended up offering about five courses, but we had great participation in those five Good. courses. Good. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. And, and I think just by, we have over 35 people on this call with us and I think just by those numbers, people are learning to figure it out and, and adjust to some of the new ways of how we have to do things. Um, since you brought up the pandemic, Michelle, I wonder if you would talk a little bit about um, how maybe education and continued learning can help us through some of these times, which we know are difficult. Sure. Thank you, Beth. And it is so exciting to see all your faces on this call. Um, I'm reiterating both of these beautiful ladies and in their sentiments, but it is, it is something that we really and truly are excited about. You know, we were excited pre-pandemic. As, as Jennifer had discussed, we were looking, we had been working, looking at the space in our building ensuring that we had accurate space, mapping out all the details to get this off the ground in the Center for Active Living building and the Plymouth community in September. It was important then because learning keeps people, all people, but seniors particularly, it, it stimulates the brain. It's important for health. It's important for connectiveness. It's important for engagement. We need to continue learning. Beth and I were very, very adamant that lifelong learning not only was going to be a wonderful program at Cal, it was going to be an important one because it is important to our community. With the pandemic, we're in a situation where I know many of you feel very isolated. I know I speak for myself and I'm, I have a job, I go to an office every day. I still feel pretty isolated socially from those that I love. So we know that it's particularly difficult on the senior population. If we can give you a way to engage your brain, engage with others, and learn something and feel like you are productive, you know what? Baseball may or may not be here, but that's a home run to me. That is a win, win, win. So that's what we're gonna do. And that's why we're here. Awesome. Um, Jennifer, so we do have a very wide variety of courses, but I'd like to ask a couple of questions before we get to the meat of that discussion. So how does this exactly work? I know that there is um, a fee of $55 for people to register. What might that include? How does it go? Is this a class with tests and papers or is it just knowledge that will absorb? Thank you. Um, so yes, there is a fee of $55, um, but I'd like to mention that if anyone can't afford the fee, then we have um, a system for helping people with a scholarship. So um, we would like anyone that's on this conversation or viewing this later to know that um, the fee is not, uh, we don't want that to be a barrier for anyone. So just let us know if that's awesome. Um, the fee is very nominal and it just covers uh, the small stipends that we pay our instructors. No one is going to earn a living. Sorry? You want to listen in or no? Courses for the senior college. Um, it really is something that they do because they're passionate about connecting with seniors and sharing the knowledge that they have. Um, so yeah, fifty-five dollars gets you thirty courses, and you can take one course, you can take five courses, or you can take thirty courses. So with the virtual model. Previously, you could take three courses for $55 in person, and now we've just opened it wide open to all the courses. So we have, uh, right now, I've been monitoring the enrollment, and we have folks that are signing up for um, usually around somewhere between three and four courses. We have a few folks that are just taking one course, so it's really whatever you know time folks have available or what's of interest to them. Um, and the courses are offered 
most every course except for one is four weeks long one hour sessions and okay. they're offered at a variety of um times and you know times of day and they start in september they start in october and they start in uh, november so there's a rolling component to it so say september you're busy you have you know vacations planned or you're have other things going on but then you want to connect with us in october and sign up you still will have a lot of offerings so the, those 30 courses are spread over the whole fall semester from september to december Fabulous. Oh, I think I am getting more excited as the day goes on. Earlier today, Michelle and I were talking, passing in the hallway, and I looked at her and said, I want to take some of these. And she actually looked at me and said, well, you're over 50. You can. <laughs> and we, we really did chuckle, but they do sound very exciting. Um, so, Michelle, do you want to chime in with Jennifer and maybe we can offer a little tidbit of um, a taste of what might be coming in September, October, and November? I love a good teaser. <laughs> yes, so, she does. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. I think... Um, I, and, I, and I just want to say again, Jennifer, and to Jennifer and to the Bridgewater State University team, um, I remember walking through this building with you and your team and just looking at each other and saying, this is really going to happen. This is a great partnership. This is the beginning of a beautiful relationship. So you are all part of that. Um, and I want you to know that this is not only groundbreaking, but it is... It is something that is here just for you. And I'm really proud of that. And I love, love, love Bridgewater State University's philosophy on all of this. They really care. We saw that very clearly. Um, I'm a Bridgewater State alum. Yes, I'm plugging that. Um, <laughs> I'm over, bachelor and master's, but so I'm biased, but I should be. So a little bit of tease. And, you know, I think Jennifer, you, um, you, you brought this program to us, so maybe you want to do the honors of, of sharing one or two of the classes or highlight a class or two that you think would pique people's interest, and we'll, we'll play off each other with that. Sure. So um, there's a couple of things. So one is that I think we have a mix of courses that uh, some that are related to what is going on right now. Like in the spring, we had a class on fake news and scams and misinformation, you know, like that was happening, you know, right away with the pandemic. We also have, um, so we, we have this mix of like useful practical information that you need today. So for instance, we have our very popular election 2020 course with Dr. Michael Krizanek. He's a, he's like our rock star of the senior college. He has the most popular course. We had 50 people in his course last fall. Um, he presents information about what's going on in elections from state, local, and the federal presidential election in a totally um, non or uh, nonpartisan way. He's a political scientist, so he doesn't um, share his, you know, personal political philosophy at all. And it's a really informative way of learning about what's going on right now. So that class, I, I, it's already our most popular class. And he is presenting that class um, over the course of, actually that class will be 10 weeks long, unlike all our other classes. So it will be weekly. So he'll really be diving in with folks, um, you know, every single week about what's going on in the elections. And then we have things from, you know, we have a class on Angela Davis, um, you know, the movement that her writings have created from Me Too to Black Lives Matter and beyond. But say you're done, like you're watching the news all the time and you want something totally to escape. We have a course on genealogy and that's, that was really popular. We offered that in the spring. Um, folks are really into that right now with all the uh, tools that we have online. We have a course on, um, on deja vu and tricks of the mind. We have a course on uh, the personality and the self. We have a, a course that will be really interesting on the final year, the Western Front in Europe of um, 1944 to 1945. That's about the, the final year of World War II. 
Um, one thing that's been really important in our classes is the experience of intergenerational learning. So last semester, or the fall semester, we had a course on the 1960s, and everyone in that course um, had lived through the 60s except for the instructor. So here she <laughs> is with a PhD, an expert on the 60s, but yet she wasn't born until the 1970s. So she would mention like a freedom ride that happened and we had a man in the class who was like, oh, I was there, you know, or she would mention, you know, all these great historical moments and the people in the class would share with her their firsthand observations about those moments and what it was like living through them. So that's Another part of this, you know, is that some of the instructors will be your age or older, but a lot are younger. So there's this piece where this, the information goes back and forth in a way that's really um, just touching to me as, a, as an observer. Um, I had the opportunity to sit in in all of our classes because they were via Zoom in the spring. So I sat in on the genealogy class and it, you know, it made me go back and talk to my dad who's in his 80s and ask him the questions that, you know, I knew I should have been asking him, but I hadn't had the um, opportunity to yet, or I hadn't really thought about it. So those are some of the questions. They are all on our website, which is, um, you can just go to bridgew.edu and type in the words senior college, or you can just Google Bridgewater State University Senior College too, um, or here in the chat, if you can see that, I also posted it there. Um. Jen, in your highlights, you sent me a couple of things that are going to happen. Um, one is going to be next week, the ABCs of Zoom. Yes. So is that for people to learn? Yes. So we thought it would be good to do a primer of Zoom before we get started. So we have a couple of events coming up. One is, um, sorry, I'm just pulling them up on my website here. So we have um, an event where we'll just give a tutorial on Zoom. We'll show folks some of the components that we use in the class. One of the things that we use is breakout groups. So if you've never participated in that, it's really fun. You just sit and then the instructor can put you in a, in a private room and you don't have to do anything other than just go for the virtual ride and you can stay in a private room for a few minutes and then the instructor can pull you back into the main room. So we'll show you those features. We'll also just make sure that everyone's on board and knows how to mute and you know, share video if they want to, not share video, um, maybe even share their screen if needed, um, use the reactions, that kind of thing. So that event is on August 27th at 2.30 p.m. So that's the ABCs of Zoom. And you can just um, send us an email to register for that. Or you can check us out on Facebook. We have a Facebook page as well. And then on um, September 2nd at 1 p.m., we have an information session. So that um, is just a general conversation like this um, about the, the courses. And we'll have some of the instructors be at that session as well. So you'll be able to meet and see some of the faces. If you and just... Oh, sorry, Beth, just know that everything Jen is talking about from the classes to the details to these um, Zoom meetings and, and information sessions, we will make sure that you get all of the information you need. Do not worry about hurrying and trying to write down everything. Um, we will make sure that that information gets directly to you so you're not, so you're in the know about everything. Exactly what I was going to say, Michelle. <laughs> That's why we work so well together. Yeah, we'll give it to you. So no Jennifer, problem. I guess the most important thing is when do classes actually begin? Yes, our classes start, the first class is that election 2020 class and that starts on September 2nd. Okay. And then after that, the next class is on September 9th and so on and so forth. Basically okay. every week there's a different class that starts throughout the whole semester. Okay. Um, there is a question in the chat. If, could I answer that? So um, one is how do we register? So you do that through our website, which is posted there in the chat or by Googling Bridgewater State Senior College. Another is, is it open to only Plymouth residents? It is not. It is, you know, we started it in Bridgewater. So that's been our core group of folks. But even when we started in Bridgewater, we had folks come from Carver, Kingston, you know, Mansfield. I mean, folks were driving 40 minutes to come to our in-person classes. So we have a wide audience. 
um, and the classes are open to everyone. So we're, you know, really though hoping to build an audience. We think that by having this semester virtually and connecting with the folks in Plymouth, you know, our hope is to build a, a group of folks that are interested in that way when we can come back in person, whenever that is, that we will have, you know, some champions of the program and maybe some ideas for new classes specific to Plymouth. You know, I know our university, um, you know, we had been committed long, you know, ago because of the 400th anniversary, we had been planning on doing a, um, a conference about indigenous people. And so there's like all these learning opportunities that we've been focused on in Plymouth and things that are sort of Plymouth specific or, you know, obviously Plymouth has such a rich history. We'd love to be able to, you know, get your feedback about what Plymouth residents are specifically interested in as we move forward. Um, so we're totally open to that and having things be, you know, maybe it's a book club that's just for Plymouth, or maybe it's a, a learning group of, you know, someone that wants to, you know, work with the Pilgrim Hall and dive deeper into historical issues just in the community. And when we come back in person, we'd love to have um, those sorts of things just for Plymouth residents. I think when this airs on PAC TV, um, will give people a way to contact you and I, um, because I think your open invitation right there will uh, entice some people who have a lot of history and might be able to share their information and love of Plymouth um, to go along with that. Um, Joe asked a question, which was, are you associated with OSHER lifelong learning? But I don't believe you are. We are not, but we would love to be. So, you know, OSHA is a, um, an aspirational place for any senior college to be. So they are, um, you know, a funder. They, they provide um, grants to senior colleges like ourselves. Um, the University of Massachusetts Boston has an OSHA lifelong learning program. So um, that's something that we have sort of in our long-term goals is, you know, perhaps being associated with them but um, all of their programs, they have to start somewhere. So that's where we are now. We're self-funded by the university. Um, we're so fortunate that our, you know, that Bridgewater is, you know, supportive of this, especially given the pandemic and the crisis that is facing higher ed. Um, our president said from the get-go that this is an important program and that we're moving forward with full steam ahead. And if anyone knows anyone at OSHA, tell them to call me. I'd be happy to take a grant from them anytime. <laughs> So I know we are just so excited about this, but I also know that our time is dwindling quickly. So um, if people have questions, please feel free at this time to unmute yourself. Um, and Jennifer, Michelle, and I will all take those questions. So do we have any questions? There, there was one in the chat about someone asked about if we had any computer science courses. Yeah. We have one course this fall on um, Microsoft Excel. So it's an introduction to Microsoft Excel. It's how to use it for, you know, purposes. Maybe you're involved in a nonprofit or, you know, you're a volunteer in a different organization or you just want it to organize things at home, you know, whether it be a shopping list or whatever, we have a course on that. But you do have to have Microsoft Excel. Um, I think that would probably make sense if you had it on your home computer. Um, and that's all we have for this semester, but we're open and we would love to have more computer science classes as we move along in the future. Yes. Okay. Any questions? from our participants. Mm -hmm. I have one. Oh, Go ahead. And then Mary that, after her. That, um, hi, I think this ooh, is fantastic. But um, I have a question and I don't know if it's a strange question, but how much work is involved with this? Because number one, I've never been to college and I think that's one thing that holds me back is because I'm nervous about going to an on-site facility. So, are there papers involved? Do we do we uh, have verbal? Things? Oh, we I mean, I didn't question. know it would just learning at our own pace, which personally I would like, but I don't know um, how it works. Yeah, great question. I probably that I should have covered that from the get go. So these courses are enrichment courses. They are learning for the fun and enjoyment of learning. Mm. There's no tests. There's no quizzes. And there's no papers. With that said, though, as you read through the course descriptions, 
there are a few courses um, this semester that would require some reading. So for example, if you're interested in that course on the writings of Angela Davis, then you would be prepared to do some reading about Angela Davis. But of course, there's no tests or assessments on it. For the most part, um, the classes don't require any reading outside of class. Lots of the instructors provide links or PDF documents to things that might enrich your learning if you mm -hmm. want to participate in that. But there's no no test. It's just learning for fun. I have to I remind the instructors all the time. This is just for fun. There's no assessments. There's no grades. There's no quizzes. That's there's great. No, great. No stress. That's no why. No stress. No. Your just fun and like. enjoyment. <laughs> Great, Great question, question, Pat. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Mary had one first, I think, and then, okay. Mary, just unmute yourself. I thought I did. Ah. Um, my life resolves around my Zoom meetings. And so are we going to get some kind of a spreadsheet that so that we can plan so they don't overlap? I, you know, I understand that you said that, um, I took notes. Um, the election thing started 9-2, and then something else starts 9-9. Nine, nine. And I'm sure they're at different times, but is it different days through the week and stuff like that as well? Yeah, so we have 30 courses and they all take place on different times, different days of the week. We have a schedule at the, of, at the glance, it's called the schedule at a glance, that's on our website that you could print or okay. look at that has all the classes and it has the day of the week, the course dates and the course times. What we'll be doing is adding the Zoom link to this document and then sending it to everyone that's registered. So if you register and you say you sign up for five classes and some are in September, October, November, you'll get this document that will have every Zoom link on it. So every Tuesday at 12 noon, you'll go to the document and click on that Zoom link. So we'll try to make it as user friendly as possible, but you will definitely have to look at your own schedule, evaluate you know, what dates and times work for you. But again, if you miss a class, it's okay. You know, There's no grades, no assessments. We'd obviously love to have everyone participate in all the classes. You know, If you sign up for a course, we'd love you to come to all four sessions, but we understand that life happens and that you might have other obligations too. How soon can I register? You can register right now if you go to our website. <laughs> when we're <laughs> done with this meeting, Mary, <laughs> you can <Okay>. register. <laughs> and all right. we will be sending the link as soon as this meeting is yes. over too. All the information we'll be sending to all of you. Thank so you. fortunately, our time has passed very quickly. Um, so we're going to close this edition of Nook News, but everybody on this call, please do not hang up. So Jennifer Reed, I cannot thank you enough for joining us today and explaining how um, our brand new partnership with Bridgewater State University's uh, Lifelong Learning Senior College is going to go. Thank you, Michelle Brady, for our fearless leader and director for taking time out of your day to join us. And um, I hope you all have a great day.